Hey, amazing man. Oh, we got a frozen. Hello, Josh. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Welcome. How are yes, you? I can hear. How are you? <laughs> I thought you were frozen in time. We're gonna make a Disney musical. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, amazing man? I'm good. How are you going? Uh, Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you. Oh, it's we a are, pleasure to be here. We are thrilled to have a musical theatre leading man on Chicken with Chapel with us. Ah, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> here you are. It's my it's my my pleasure to be here with you, lovely folk from Chapel of Chapel, <laughs> but specifically you. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. I feel very privileged. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you. You were the one of the first people to call me and say, "How are you guys doing at Chapel once oh, when really? this COVID thing happened?" And I just appreciate you so much for that. Oh, no worries at all. Well, you guys have looked <laughs> after me for so long and looked after me through most of my career, so I just needed to check in with you guys, make sure you were all all doing well. Oh, well, yeah. So it, it, it means a lot to us. You're one of the first, and I was like, "Wow, Josh, love you." <laughs> oh, I love you too, mate. Love you too. <laughs> How you been going in ISO? The, the, oh, look, I question. mean, probably, probably about as well as everyone else. I reckon it's. Um, I mean, it's it. It is what it is. We've got to we've got to do what we can as artists to sort of pivot and change and figure out the next direction. And um, yeah, I've spent a lot of my time trying to trying to do that as well as. Uh, sort of shifting career for the moment as well too. I've been really lucky to sort of pick up some uh, work as a labourer. So uh, oh, lovely! My, yeah, it's com- completely changed my life. This uh, this whole COVID thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a com- so it's a complete shift. Pre COVID, you're in Shrek the Musical. Yeah, I was. And, yeah, yeah, and you were about to you were producing Bonnie and Clyde in September in the Hayes Theatre in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. So we were all lined up to... Uh, I would be in Brisbane right now with the show, with with Shrek. Um, and, yeah, we were all lined up and all of the... Oh, what have we got? Ah, oh, Joe, I just saw my cousins uh, joined. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Um, welcome, we, Joe. Welcome, Joe. And Annie Cheers is here. Hey, Cheers. Um <laughs> Oh, mate, I could do that all night and just keep saying yeah. hi. Uh, yeah, so we were we were all set to be in Brisbane at the moment. And, um, yeah, we were going to be uh, opening this time. Ne- uh, yeah, this time next week we'd be opening in Brisbane. But, yeah, just massive, massive change in, in everything uh, has sort of brought the whole industry to a halt and, um yeah unfortunately me and both my part like ash ash my partner was working on it she was the chaperone on it so she's lost her job and i've lost mine oh. um yeah it was just it was just a big hit to to us but it's i guess it's it's nice to know that we're not alone everyone in the whole entire industry is sort of going through going through the same thing at the same time including yourself as a as a theatre sort of manager over there at Chapel of Chapel, it's like, yeah, you've got to sort of figure out a way to a way to change. So yeah, just constantly thinking about creatively, yeah, um, different things, which is a great thing. Like it, it, one of the good things about this, I've been thinking so much more creatively. And, yeah, and exactly so, right. And so have you? Yeah, yeah, I've been trying. <laughs> so <laughs> once the. Once the COVID was set in and you wanted to produce Light Up the Arts. Yeah. Tell us about yeah, which is going yeah, to be yeah. on Monday the 11th of May. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, once, once all this happened, I mean, me and obviously lots of other people in the industry who were sort of trying to figure out what the next sort of path is for us all, um, how, how do we sort of navigate everything that's happening, uh, yeah, sort of creatively, it's sort of blossomed into this into this massive world of creativity behind the scenes. Like people are creating new stuff. We're having more conversations like this. 
Um, yeah. yeah, we we're just we're doing we're doing more um, behind the scenes. We're creating new work, which is probably a great thing. Like it's yeah. it's giving people permission. It's giving people permission to play. We've got the time. We've got we've got the space, and um, we can we can create new things, and we can play with existing things, and um, yeah, explore new worlds. So, yeah, that's what my sort of uh, idea was like as I was sort of out on out on the work site and shoveling dirt and picking up picking up steel and walking around everywhere doing whatever a laborer does. Um, obviously, my mind is elsewhere trying to figure out how I can uh, how I can figure out a way back in for the industry. And yeah, after after the uh, Rosie O'Donnell's Broadway concert, um, James Cutler, who's uh, doing this with me. Um, this concert with me. Uh, Big shout out to James. He, 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 he spoke to me. Yeah, he's, he's great. <laughs> um, yeah, he, sp- he spoke to me and he said, hey, Mia, how are you? Hi. He didn't say that. I was just saying hi to Mia, who was one of our <laughs> young Fiona's in um, in Sydney for Shrek, which oh, um, wow. she was a superstar and still is, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so we had to... Uh, uh, yeah, while on the work side, I'm sort of thinking of ways that I can sort of insert myself and and um, my company into this industry still and still stay present and stay vocal um, throughout the whole time uh, that we... Oh, and Amelia's here too. Sorry. Hi, Amelia. Um, and, <laughs> and Kate Kelly. Uh, <laughs> and Kate. Hi, Kate. Um, yeah, throughout this throughout this whole time... Uh, how we can stay present. So yeah, we came up with this concert, and after Rosie O'Donnell uh, produced hers, we looked at that and we were like, "This is really cool." He came to me with the idea, and he was like, "Do you reckon this is something we can do?" And I was like, "I've been thinking of trying to do something like this. This is great. Let's try and figure it out together." Um, and we came up with this "Lights Up on the Arts" concert, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's called "Lights Up on the Arts Home Delivery," and uh, it's literally to to relight. Um, relight all these artists who are now in isolation by themselves having lost work. So it, it focuses on people who have lost work due to everything that is happening. Um, hi, Simon. Uh, <laughs> Simon. On everything that is happening and Dottie May. Hey. Um, yeah, focusing on everyone that has lost work due to everything that's happened. Um, so you've got Todd McKenney who was starring in, um, in Shrek as Lord Farquaad down to uh, people... Uh, Michelle Brazier, who was about to perform in the Melbourne Inter- International Comedy Festival. So we've got a wide range of people who have um, high names, uh, who have uh, sort of been involved in this uh, massive pandemic of of shutdown of the arts yeah. across the across the board, um, coming together. And and we sort of we sort of thought that the best thing about this is you don't have to fly to Brisbane, you don't have to fly to WA, you don't have to fly to Adelaide to see these shows. They're literally all here in your lounge room, which is, re- it's really cool. It's really raw. It's really real. Um, it's an honest representation of, uh, of what artists are doing now. And we've, we've said to, we've said to these artists, Hey, Hey Alex, how are you mate? Um, we've said to these artists, Hey, uh, you dress up in your tuxedo or your ball gown and sit in your kitchen and sing your song, fine. You dress in your pyjamas and lie in bed and sing your song and have your chat, also fine. We want you to do whatever you'd like to do, represent yourself however you'd like to represent yourself. Um, and that's, that's the honesty of it. And uh, the viewers who are going to, who are going to be watching for the night, they're going to get an honest representation of what artists are doing, whether that is them standing in a ball game in the kitchen. It's, it's real. Like, like that's where, that's where our artists are at the moment. They, their only chance to dress up and hi Chambers, their only chance <laughs> to dress up and get involved in the uh, industry still is by potentially to standing in their kitchen and having a belt to their camera, um, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm just I'm I'm just sitting in sitting in a room out the back of the house and talking to my phone. And people are watching. You don't feel like people are watching, but um, it's still a way to send a message of of um, yeah, artists being being 
heard and being seen and being present and um, yeah, that's sort of the the whole idea about the whole concept of representing these artists who were and work uh, now and showing viewers where they are now and giving them some entertainment from across the country in some of Australia's biggest sort of music theatre shows. Um, you, you've, and, yeah, you've got the you got star of stars of a musical theatre lineup in Australia. You got like. Top yeah, yeah. Notch. Well, we went. <laughs> yeah, we went. We went to. We went to all the sort of the main, the main big sort of commercial productions that have sort of been shut down due to everything. Yeah. And we uh, went to all those leading performers from it, or not some aren't all leading performers. But you've got people from Shrek and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which was up in Brisbane. You've got yeah. um, Come From Away. You've got Harry Potter. You've got Melbourne International Comedy Festival. You've got Merrily Will Roll Along, which was meant to play at the Hayes Theatre later this year. You've got, um, oh, what am I missing? Billy Elliot. Uh, so you've got so many different shows uh, that are being represented in this one concert uh, from representatives from each show. School of Rock, which is another one, um, yeah. which is what James James was in. And yeah, uh, yeah so we've got, we've got sort of some of Australia's leading performers um, performing for you in your lounge room. And one of the main sort of concepts that we we uh, came up with was um, the idea of re representing one composer for the whole night. So uh, Stephen Schwartz is who we, who we sort of chose, which is great. Um, we approached him and we approached him and we were like, hey, can we perform some of your... <laughs> Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> but you're not allowed to do that. You just knock on their, knock on their Instagram. Um, I, Stephen, can we? Um, Hi, Steve. How are you going? Can we? Can we use? <laughs> yeah, hey, Steve. How are you going? Can we uh, use some of your catalogue of music? Um, and he said, "Yep, whatever I can do to help uh, you guys so use what lovely. you need," which is so lovely of him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're really we're really grateful um, for. For Stephen, hey, Kaz, how you going? <laughs> um, we're super grateful for him uh, allowing us the opportunity to use that music. And uh, yeah, all of our artists have sort of picked a variety of songs from Wicked and Pippin and um, all the way through to Godspell. And and uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's going to be a really cool night. And we had a dress rehearsal the other night, which was. Really interesting because how, how obviously that, this, wor this world, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's sort of so we're we're doing it to Facebook Live. So the whole the uh, the technical components of this whole show is so it's so intricate, and we've got a full tech team involved. We've got a sound engineer, we've got stage manager, we've got a tech uh, a tech manager as well um, wow. to try and coordinate all this stuff because the one thing we are doing differently than a lot of other bits and pieces with these large benefit concerts is that we're trying to do everything as live as we possibly can so um yes like this conversation has happened but we're not recording this conversation that we're having right now and i'll go edit it later edit out the good bits the bad bits the bits that sound yeah. weird we're trying to represent for both artists and audiences uh the live experience so the nerves that the artists get, the excitement and thrill that the artists might get before performing. Um, we want to encourage that component of, uh, of this event so the artists still get that thrill and the adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline rush <laughs> rather than being able to watch back a video and edit it if they don't quite like it and things like that. We want that adrenaline rush to still exist uh, for artists. We think that's really important and that's part of what, it's, what keeps us going. Um, and then we also want for audiences the adrenaline rush of seeing something for the first time, seeing something raw, seeing something real uh, and being able to engage with that. So it'll be on Facebook Live and we'll be able to encourage our audiences like like our viewers right now. They're, they're allowed to comment and they're allowed to ask questions and they're allowed to do whatever they like. And we can, which is something you can't do in an actual live in an actual live production, um, yes, you have to sit there, true. you have to watch it, you <laughs> have to go out at interval and you have to fingers cross your chance to see someone at stage door that you might want to ask a quick question or an autograph or something like that. But in our concert, 
uh, they might perform for you and then we come back and we might have the ability to answer questions for that artist. You might be able to ask and have that answered live for you right then after they've performed, which is, which is an, a positive of this experience. It's, it's that immediate engagement with oh, uh, these leading performers in our industry, which is really great. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a really long answer. No, uh, I love it. <laughs> so it's going to be on your... Um, your channel on Facebook? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so it'll be, it won't be on Instagram. Uh, I mean, I'll try and send as many people from my Instagram yeah. through to through to the Facebook, but it should be on facebook.com forward slash Joshua Robson Productions. Um, if right. you head there at seven o'clock next Monday, uh, it'll yeah. be on. And, yeah. uh, and Um, <laughs> I, I thought I should turn off my my notifications. Um, yeah, so, All good. so the, the concert is next Monday, 11th, 7 o'clock. If you go to my Facebook page, it'll be there, ready to go. Um, you just click on that link and open it up and away we go. And uh, also on the night, so a lot of other the, these other benefit concerts are uh, raising money for foundations and... Uh, artist benefits and things like that, which are really great. And I'm not discrediting those organizations in the slightest. I think what they do is brilliant. And I think what they do is great for the industry. And um, that is not the reason, the, that is not the reason why we're not uh, donating to those organizations. We really love them. Um, but what we wanted to change for ours is we wanted to try and make the artists involved in the concert who are, uh, who are giving up their time, who are giving up their energy to perform for the night. We wanted to try and make sure that they were receiving the donations back personally. So what we're doing, any donation that goes into our GoFundMe link on the night, um, and that link's available now at the moment, any donation that goes into that link on the night will be evenly split across the board uh, between all of our production company, um, which we think is something we're doing differently and something that we really are proud of. Oh my god! Like, yeah. I mean, the talent is out of control. How many performers do you have in this one? Ah, uh, one. Was I? It's it's probably it's probably between fifteen and twenty performers for this one. Amazing, I think. And is it, it is amazing? Is it yeah. going to be a one-off? Ah, uh, at or this is it going to one-off? Continue. I, yeah. I would really. I would. I'd, in my head, I'd love to continue it. Um. Yeah, mm. I'm really enjoying producing this. It's it's really it's really. It's really great and it's really different and it's keeping me engaged. Ah, Sarah Merz here. She's one of our performers. <laughs> hey, oh, Sarah Merz. Um, <laughs> yes, she's, she's going to be brilliant. No worries at all. And Gab's here. Good man. Hey, big man. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's going to be really, it's going to be, yeah, really cool, I think, being able to. Oh, I can't wait. Um, being able to watch that. It's great. It's unusual. It's different. Ah, oh, yeah, it is. That's a good summer. It, it is really weird. I, I think I was sort of like half mentioning before the fact that our um, dress rehearsal the other night, it was really weird. So you think of, think of your, Zoom, your Zoom call that you, you have. That's what we sort of had the other night with, with everyone involved. And um, there was a lot of muting and stopping video and jumping in and out. And we had our, it, like, it was a really great translation of, um, what happens in an actual theatre, um, a really great translation of what happens in a theatre onto this platform. We had a stage manager running the thing. We had a sound engineer telling people what to do with their sound settings on their, on their computer. And um, we had everyone else being quiet whilst uh, other people were performing or, or whilst other people were taking their stuff. It was really interesting to watch how that can translate so, so simply um, Visually simply, I mean, yeah. technically it's quite advanced, but yeah. Um, yeah, so simply onto this platform, it's, uh, it's really cool and it's really, it's really nice to have a great time. I've got Elise Glass, who was my stage manager uh, on Shrek, um, and her husband, Jace. Uh, they're both helping out from the tech point of view and the stage management point of view. And then we've got um, a girl named Stacey, who's helping us out with all the sound, and then James Cutler and myself. So we've got quite a big team. Um, who are actually focused on all that stuff. Uh, so whilst, whilst it may seem simple when you guys see it, hopefully it seems simple. Um, yeah. yeah, it it actually is quite a lot going 
on behind the scenes and I couldn't do it without all these brilliant people's minds who would, who know this tech world so perfectly. So I've assembled a nice team um, to work with, which is really great. Oh, my God, I can't wait. Monday night, 7 p.m. Jump That's on the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's rewind to you back to 1996. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1996. Um, how old were you back then? I was six. Six. And you started at Star Train Academy? I did. I did. Yeah. I started at Star Train Academy way back when I was five. And I don't know if my cousin's here. My cousin might be on uh, Steph. Um, but when I was five, Steph wanted to uh, join a dance class, and um, my mum and uh, my mum came up to me and was like, "Hey, can you go along with it? I think it'd be really cool for both of you to do it because we were the oldest out of all my cousins." And oh, right. uh, yeah, we we went along to this dance class, and uh, yeah, think sort of like performing academy. It had singing and dancing, and uh, we did that for probably about ten years. So I did that till I was in year eight or nine and yeah that's sort of where my love for all this theatre started really when I was five. amazing yeah. <laughs> are we doing dance comps and singing comps and no well I wasn't doing any of those things but uh, it was yeah. I was um no I, re I really loved doing what I was doing no no awesome. comps for me though <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I was doing some dance comps back in the day <laughs> oh yeah get around him yeah but but I, I got into the field when I was like Later on, 18, I started doing dance classes. 18? 18, I know, right? I wasn't six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then you went to um, VCA. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, not not then, but like uh, there was a lot that happened in between. <laughs> when you were seven, <laughs> between 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 six and eighteen, there was a lot that yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did go to VCA. Uh, I, yeah, my school, so I went to Kerry Grammar School and um, my drama teacher is actually here watching. Oh, I can hello. so see you in dance comps. Oh, Ibby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Chambers was my, my drama teacher and she, uh, she'll love me saying this, I'm sure. Um, she's a very humble person. Uh, she uh, was one of my biggest supporters through my music theatre career in school she sort of said everything the careers counselors didn't and said go for it this is yeah this is what you need to be doing which is really great of her and i'm eternally thankful for her um i yes, don't think so. i've ever said that to her but she's right there yeah. so i guess i'm saying <laughs> that to her now um awesome no but it, it build it builds from that stuff and uh yeah she did help me with that vca audition and um yeah, I, I fortunately got in. I didn't put myself down for anything else. So I was like, this is this is the job I want to do. Yeah. Um, this is the this is the course I want to do. So I'm just going to go for this and hope for the best. Uh, and the best happened, which was lovely. Um, How was it when you? First, what was your first day like? Oh, first did day. Did you think? Did you think it was going to be like fame? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, just, despite despite everything you think about me, I'm not probably the most music theatre uh, educated human being. I should I should know I should know more about music theatre, but uh, I'm, looks can be deceiving. Did um, you run in like that? I, 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 the one thing I remember from my first day, and I don't know if they're here, they're probably not. Uh, but Hugo Chiarella, uh who was one of my classmates, oh, he. Yeah. Um, who you would definitely know with Rob Triple yes. writing their music. Um, yeah, but uh, Hugo on the first day, uh, I, I was a young fella and he's, he's a few years older than me. And as we're walking down to a class, I was like, what's your name? And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm Hugo. And he was like, oh, nice, nice to meet you. And I was like, Hugo, hey, hey, can I call you the boss? And I'm like, Hugo boss? And he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon... I reckon that's one oh, one yes, thing yes. I, one thing I remember from my first day. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, I had I had such yeah, I know I've got the best <laughs> mates here uh, <laughs> off to a flyer. Uh, no, but I had I had I had a great time with all my classmates. We had a really good we had a really really good class, and um, 
yeah, we've all gone on to do some Amazing. some great things, which is really cool. Like collectively across that board, we were really lucky. We had a really talented and really, um, really uh, resilient group of uh, students that we got to work with. And we had some great teachers that we got to learn from. And I think that's why we've done so well uh, up until yeah. now. We've all, we've all sort of had a great foundation of learning from uh, my high school through into that uh, um, uni course and into the industry yeah I've had a really great learning experience I guess that's awesome and what, yeah so once you finished VCA what was your first pro audition you went to went for oh uh, well we I did a, <laughs> I did a few throughout my final yeah. year yeah um but the first one that I booked was King Kong and King Kong. I which is cool uh, it was really weird. It was really different, but yeah. I went really hard in that audition and then was lucky enough to book it. And um, it didn't start for a year after I knew about it. So uh, I found out a year before the first date of rehearsals, which was um, something that I had to sort of manage, I guess. Uh, so yes. I had a year, I had a year to sort of uh, stumble through the industry and sort of figure my way out and figure out what to do in the meantime until I could start that job a year later. So I did. Was that, uh, so that a year later was the audition. I mean, the rehearsal starting. Yeah, a year, a oh, year wow. after I found out that I got into the show, the rehearsal yeah. started. So yeah, it was it was much later down the track, and I um, I did Scooby Doo. I did Scooby Doo yes. that toured around. New South Wales and at the Princess Theatre in Melbourne. I did that that live show with Fred. I did uh, a little opera called Threepenny Opera. I did a little performance of that in a uh, festival. And then I did the King Kong workshop. So there was a workshop before we actually started the show and that was in um, later later in that year in 2012. Um, I, I did that. And they were the sort of three things that kept me occupied throughout my first year out before starting my first big show in King Kong, which was a big show. Big show. And then you went on yeah. to do Lay Miz, the Dream Lover, My Fair Lady, Me's yeah. Wedding. Yeah. And most recently, you've been doing Shrek the Musical, which is amazing. Yeah, but I've sort of drummed up yeah. a nice little catalogue of shows, which is oh, um, so I'm really fortunate. Yeah, yes. thank you. It's it, it's it's, it's uh, a lot of work, but the look, the the work sort of pays off, which is nice. It's it's a nice reward when you work that hard so early. You start to benefit later down the track, where you can sort of enjoy the experiences rather than um, rather than stress about them. I guess you can start yeah. to look at it a different way when you. I, I was about to say get to my age, like I'm eighty six or something, but <laughs> like when. When when you um, get this far into the industry, it's it's nice to it's nice to look back and go, oh cool, I worked hard, I can I can enjoy this now, and I can I can I can do what I'm doing. Yeah, and then go yeah. re rewind back to to 2014. Mm -hmm. You were a, the winner of the Rob Guest Endowment Award. Yeah, I was. Uh, that, tell us that, about... that was <laughs> that, was, uh, that was probably one of that was probably one of the best sort of performing yeah. experiences of my life. I, like the further the further into the industry I get, the more I'm like, I really love producing. I really enjoy yeah. performing as well, but I really enjoy my producing. I like being able to um, to give people opportunity rather than take opportunity for myself, which yeah. um, I've sort of discovered. Uh, I really enjoy the performing though. It's, there's nothing like it. But that performance in 2014 was one that yeah. I'll, I'll always remember. It was so it was the first time that I got to sing solo in front of that many people, and um, I felt so great, and I felt really confident going in, and I felt really relaxed. And um, yeah, I, it was it was a really cool experience, and I was alongside one of my best mates, Andy Cook. Um, and it was right, amazing. Yeah, yeah. He was right there. Yeah, yeah, was was right there. Like going in there with your, one of your friends. Like, ooh. Um, I don't know. Away. I think I mean, <laughs> we were just we were just happy for happy for each other. I think. Um, yeah, it did was it a, was such. Did, did you do a show, girls, and push him down the stage? Push him down the stage. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I wasn't like that. At, 
not like that at all. I, I would have pushed him and pushed him up the stairs, not down the stairs. You need to stop referencing musicals. I don't know Showgirls. What's Showgirls? <laughs> Showgirls is a movie. You have to watch it. It's okay. Funny. I will. <laughs> I don't know if Showgirls is on my to do list, but I, I need to watch the Michael Jordan documentary first. And no, Showgirls, Showgirls before up. Michael Jordan. <laughs> nah, I don't know. <laughs> you love it. Okay, I'll love it. I watch Showgirls after Michael. Yeah. Jordan. Tell her. Um, if anyone's watching, no, tell yeah. You what? Put some, put some hearts for Showgirls. It's the best. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was, it was really cool getting the chance to perform alongside him. We were doing... That, that was... Uh, that was... Yeah, that was what it was. It was great. That was awesome. Was and that's, really when cool. we, that's when we met you, around about that stage. Yeah, I think, I think that's sort of when, when I started my business and... Um, so in King Kong, I met Angelique Casamatis, yes. uh, and we both understudied the two uh, leads together. Um, oh wow! In that show, that. so we spent a lot. Yeah, we spent a lot of time rehearsing together, and I got a lot of. Uh, I've spent a lot of time getting to know her as a performer, and really, uh, and still, I I think she's one of the best performers in our industry. She's she's a true triple threat. I know lots of people hear that. Uh, all the time about triple threat, triple threat, and it's got a lot of um, negative connotations about it sometimes, someone being a triple threat. Ooh. Um, but she really is. She's so strong in all uh, all three areas. So I was like, this is, I've got to utilise this somehow. I've got to get, get showcase this person um, as best as I possibly can. Uh, and I sat down with her and I was like, I want to write a show with you, uh, for oh. you. Uh, so yes. We we sat down and we uh, sort of nutted out this show concept together. And I, in my head, I was like, "What can I write about?" Because I've never written before, and I was like, "I don't really know." Amazing. How, really? I, I, yeah, yeah, no, I didn't know how to write, and I'm like, "I don't really know how to write or what to write." And yeah, who who knows how th- how this works? So um, I sort of sat down and I was like, "What's?" In the in in terms of music theatre, what is like triple threat in terms of uh, songs or shows or productions? And I thought of uh, Cell Block Tango from Chicago, and I was like, maybe I'll start from that sort of idea of these women that uh, are in jail, and uh, we hear the stories about how they got there. Um, and that's sort of where I started, and. Uh, based the whole story from that and looked back in history and I was like, we could sort of tell it like throughout history. It doesn't need to be specific to context or time. We can tell different random stories about different random contexts and time. And this one person can play these different characters. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the whole, the, the whole show uh, didn't quite fit into a specific genre. It was sort of cabaret. It was sort of music theatre. It was it was a little it was a little uh, and I say was, but it still exists. But yes. um, it's it's a it's a show that's sort of this self contained explosion of crazy and excitement, and it's re- it's really 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 interesting. And all of that is um, is thanks to Angelique. She's just such a little talented pocket rocket. Um, and we had Rob Cipollino and Hugo Curarelli write music yeah. for that. Amazing for that. Which Hugo's got a second mention. Um, yes, no, we, <laughs> we got we got those two on board to write the music, and the music is just so perfect. And Amy Campbell did the choreography, which yeah. is so perfect. It's just a, it was just a really cohesive idea and collaboration that we all came up with um, together and made together uh, for for Angelique, and it showcased her perfectly. Um, and it still sort of develops now. It still sort of shifts yeah. and changes occasionally. Um, and we occasionally come back to it if we really like it. Um, if I think for me personally producing it, I think it's done, but I don't think the show's done. I think that that show can go oh, elsewhere. Nice. And I think Angelique can go elsewhere with it, whether some other producer picks that up. Um, yeah. we'll, we can, we can figure that out, but, um, yeah, it's it's something that I treasure because it was a really great experience for me and a really great experience to watch that happen. Watching your, like watching something you produced is really great, but watching something you've written is really, it's really hard to watch because you're sitting there and you're like, I think this is really good. I think what I've put on is really great and I think everything about it is really great. But 
who the hell knows if it's really great because that's just my idea that's just my yeah. concept so um that that was sort of the first experience that i had uh in regard to experiencing review from that sort of level um if, of my personal work that i've put out there and it was um yeah it was really interesting to get that first review in that basically confirmed hey this is really good so that yeah. first review came in that was like five stars and i was like holy crap and i think i had to pull over <laughs> the car and i was like what the hell that's awesome it was that's so really cool. awesome the yeah, journey yeah, was, that we it, went on was beautiful if it, if it, yeah, if it comes and, back go and watch it because it is one of the most beautiful yeah. things i've seen yeah, and you, you guys were always so, and still are so supportive of that show and, and, and me producing that show and Angelique. Yeah. And, yeah, you're like a little fan there, which is really yeah. nice. And, and we're lucky enough to have, to we had the second season. Yeah, the second really season awesome. was great. Yeah, And yeah, then you brought really us, good. with your company, you brought us Violet. Yeah. So that, that, that was, um, that was sort of my first big producing uh, yeah. venture. So, so Guilty Pleasures was, a smaller one that we toured to Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane. Um, and we went, went up the coast with that show and it was really, really, uh, really nice to watch, um, yep. see how different sort of States received it. Uh, but then I was like, we need to do something that is real and solidified and something that exists already that we can produce and, and make um, big. So we chose this show, Violet, which is um, something that Sam Dottermaid uh, brought to me and was like, hey, ah, I, really, okay. I really think this is a great show. Um, yeah. I think you guys should produce it. And I read through it and looked at it and uh, loved all the music and loved everything. And then as soon as I sort of got through it, I was like, well, I mean, it feels like Sam Dottermaid should play this role. It really feels yeah. like her. It sounds like her. And the the script feels like something she can do. And she hadn't really done um, many major leading roles uh, yet. So I was like, this is a great opportunity for me to showcase her as a leading performer as well. Um, I mean, she'd won the Rob Guest before me. She won the year before me. Ah. So, uh, yeah, so I got to watch her do um, do that Rob Guest stuff. So I had a good idea of what she could do as a performer. So I was like, I reckon she is um, she's a, a good person to to lead this production so chose her and then uh yeah went through the whole learning process of producing a show which was um, it was a massive show yeah it wasn't a massive show <laughs> and, and we got some so... great people on board yeah. i mean yeah. uh it's all about who you know so we had we had some really great people that got involved in in a design aspect and um mitchell butel directing it and yeah. Andy campbell choreographing it and it oh, was God. just it was just a really cool production to watch evolve and um, a really new production. So the, yeah. ma the massive risk for us was that no one knows this show. No one knows yeah. what this show is. So do we, do we, uh, do we take the risk or do we uh, go for something like Greece or like Footloose yeah, yeah. or something that is easy and people know and people can come and see, but we, yeah. um, we might not get as much creative, um, uh, creative drive from it, I guess. Um, no, it's, it's really, we, it's really risky and brave to do that. Yeah, and H we hats off to the, you the and to stage up, like you know, who brought these boutique shows to Melbourne for the first time. Yeah, we've never yeah, seen well, it before. Uh, it's, yeah. it's really important, I think. It's really yeah, important to get yeah. those shows here, and especially on our level, like commercially, it's a bit different where there's more seats to sell for a longer time and providing tips yeah. to lots of people. Commercially, it's a bit harder. You need to produce something. But on an independent level where you've got less seats and you've got less time in a season, that's sort of the platform where we have the opportunity to produce these smaller things, to produce yeah. these smaller productions. But still, but um, still risky. Yeah, still, still risky. You, because, you haven't uh, like got the a, big backing of big money behind you. You know what I mean? No, 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 so we don't. Your own just money. Got, <laughs> yeah, just got, just got my wallet. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, which is, yeah, it's, it's, a t it's a tough risk to make. I was at the point yeah. where I could be like, Hey, do I buy a house or do I start a company? And um, yeah, yeah, I, was, I sort of chose to for the for the latter and start a company. And uh, yeah, it is, it's a gift that keeps on giving. I really, I really like, I really like, like providing the opportunity to a lot of a lot of these performers that are involved in the company. I've either watched 
grow as performers or I know previously as performers and I'm giving opportunity to give a platform to them to showcase themselves as a better performer than they're already known as. Um, like Ryan Gonzalez recently yes. did in, in the Heights and pre in the Heights, he was, he was doing some great roles and doing some great things, but in the Heights just elevated him to this next level where people were like, wow, he can do that as well. Like we knew he could do all of that, but that was really cool what he just did then. Um, so that, that was really cool to see that. Cause he was, he is one of my great, great, yeah. uh, great friends. And um, really nice to provide him that opportunity and then watch him shine the way he did. Not just provide the opportunity, but then go, wow, you're really great. You're brilliant. Um, so, yeah, we, yeah. we did, we did um, Violet first and took that to Sydney as well, up to the Hayes Theatre. And then we did Songs for a New World um, down in Melbs with, with you guys again. And yes. that, was, that was with uh, Luke Joslin and directing and John O'Hara and Nat O'Donnell. Uh, yeah. Lyndon Fennell so and great. Tegan Wooters, a great yeah. sort of cast of four. And we chose that show as a massive risk as well because we're like, this has been done. Um, but yeah. It hasn't been done with four people in a while, so let's just do it with four people. But also it's just a song cycle, so not many people will be interested with it. And and that was the case. Like, w we really liked what we did creatively, but it was really hard to sell a ticket because, um, yeah, it, it's that's just the way it is. Sometimes you sell... Uh, really well and sometimes you don't and then in sydney we had even more trouble with the show because those people got sick uh and yeah, in independent uh, theater it's tell us about the night that you jumped in <laughs> oh yeah well at, at that time when we when we were doing um when we were doing it up in sydney uh i was rehearsing for dream lover at the time up in sydney yeah. so with simon phillips and andrew holsworth um and we uh, were yes, they were Dynamo Chambers. They were incredible. <laughs> they they absolutely smashed it, and and they're still Dynamo. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were we were up in up in Sydney rehearsing with Simon and Andy doing Dream Lover, and I was producing at the same time at the Hay Theatre producing Songs for a New World and different cast. We had um, Chris Scalzo, Tegan Wooters, Sophie Carter, and Cam McDonald, uh, and sickness hit the cast and yeah. independent theater, in independent theater don't always have understudies don't always have the, yeah. the budget and stuff for yeah. that so you just sort of take the risk and just hope the performers can get there um which is hard on the performers but uh i mean there's sort of an understanding that that's what that's what it is um yeah. and hopefully one day that isn't the way it is for me and i can provide people the role of understudy and i can provide people with understudy so they can feel safe um, I totally understand where that part of it comes from, but yeah. um, at this stage, I didn't have didn't have the opportunity to do that. So, uh, luckily, we'd done the season before. Sophie Carter got got sick um, and regretfully had to had to drop out. But Nat O'Donnell, we flew her up from uh, Melbourne. Flew her up. Oh, and wow. we're like, Do you remember? Do you remember the show? can you do this? This is what's changed since you did it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she picked it up and she went on that night um, up in up in Sydney. And then the next day, uh, Tegan Wooders got sick. Um, and oh, it was like, we were oh, like, can oh, you oh. hang, can you, yeah, we were like, can you hang in there for tonight and perform <laughs> tonight and we'll uh, do what we can. She was like, yeah, I'll try. And everyone was really sick. Um, and then, we called up Hillary Cole and spoke with Hillary after the show. And we we're like, Hey, uh, can you come down to the theater? Cause she lived around the corner. We we're like, can you uh, rehearse this show? Uh, we need, we need to get this show oh on tomorrow God. night. And uh, you <laughs> might know it the best. Um, yeah. And she was like, yeah, okay, I'll give it a show and uh, give it a shot and sort of stumble through the blocking and all that sort of stuff for everything that she's involved in. Um, and then, learn as many harmonies as she could and then on the friday night she went on with book in hand so we gave her a little book with her music so she was sight reading songs for a new world which as anyone who knows songs for a new world would know is quite a difficult task jason Robert brown isn't the the kindest composer in terms of music <laughs> uh, musicality and uh the harmonies are quite difficult so to go on with book in hand and, and sight read was pretty impressive and then we uh on the Saturday, 
uh, I was rehearsing at Dream Lover and um, yeah, during my rehearsals, I sort of had a tea break and got to my phone and there was a message from Cam McDonald and he was like, hey, mate, um, just letting you know <laughs> I'm, I'm in a bit of strife and I think I might have to go off tonight. And what? I was like, oh, no, what is happening? <laughs> so, so I went over to our director and I was like, hey, Simon, I think I might have to pop down to Hayes. I think I might have to perform tonight in my show. And he was like, okay, cool, leave, leave rehearsals. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll all be fine. You do what you need to do, which was really nice of them because that was what yeah. I was being paid to do, that, that, that show. So it was really nice to, so of them beautiful. to let me go. Um, and I got down there and did what, what Hillary had done the, the night before I had my book in hand and I was singing that night. And that's the first time I've performed in one of my shows and the last time, hopefully. Um, no way. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't, I don't want to be performing in any of my shows ever. Uh, I think, I think it's, that's not what it's about for me. It's much more about providing other people opportunity than myself. And did I, did um, I have to produce a show to have you in it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I, I went on for that. And then the last, the last night, uh, some of the original cast came back, which was really great. And they got to, they got to finish off the show and we had, um, the people that had sort of taken over those cast members, they got to sit and watch the show in the audience. So it was, it was a really cool experience. It got, um, it wasn't selling well, um, like it was selling well enough, but it wasn't so selling out. Um, and then when that sort of news came out that Songs for a New World was going through all these all these cast changes because of sickness and stuff, sort of any publicity is good publicity. And uh, that sort of drummed up a bit of word of mouth about That's these, awesome. being random cast members on for this and people sight reading Songs for a New World. And uh, yeah, it's sort of sold you, out our final weekend. Sick. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that was really cool. And then, um, yeah, from, from there we went to in the heights and produced in the heights at the hayes theater and we can't we uh, can't forget we, we got this covered oh yeah we got this covered of course <laughs> we got this of course we can't forget we got this covered um, <laughs> Back into yeah we got we, we got this covered was with lauren hunter and andy cook who were two of my dear friends we need uh, to get that and back. they yeah, how good would that be? Though true, true facts. We need to we need to look at those two doing something. Yeah, again. yes. Um, too long. Yeah, they 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 did a show called "We Got Discovered," which was just them sort of doing a bunch of covers for for an audience and for our it was birthday. really nice and yeah for your birthday, which was so good and yeah, they're the... they're just they're just brilliant. Um, yes. Yeah, so that that was an, a nice little uh, <laughs> a nice little production to sort of tie us over in in, in between gigs, which was nice. Uh, and yeah, most recently we did in the heights at in the heights, uh, amazing at, at the haze, which was received so well. And um, we had a yeah, few sold, questions about we that sold on out. Oh, did we? Well, we we, were so, <laughs> we sold out. We sold out before we opened, and then um, yeah, got to kick on to kick on to the Sydney Opera House after that, which was a massive experience. But hit the questions. Let me know. What is it? Let's go. Have you, have you started budgeting for a Melbourne in the Heights season? From KCH2001. Hi, KCH2001. <laughs> I, as, as soon as I put the production on of In the Heights, I was planning on bringing it to Melbourne. Um, if I can bring it to Melbourne, I will bring it to Melbourne. Yes. If I can, we love that. but, awesome. but I, there's a, there's a lot of work to go in before I can bring it to Melbourne. That's for sure. In and it's mostly around, well, uh, cause the movie's coming out, it just makes rights a bit difficult at the moment because uh, the, the whole cinema, cinema, uh, experience. Um, but if I can bring it, I will. So she's, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. we're turning 25 this year, Joshua Robson. Yeah. Temple of Trembles turning 25. What advice would you give your 25-year-old self? Uh, when was 25? So Just after, in... after the Rob Guest. Oh, well, what? there you go. Um, <laughs> I know you more than you know yourself. <laughs> yeah, you do. You really do. You've got all the facts <laughs> in front of you. I've got, I'm relying on facts in here. You've got, you've got notes. I know you. I know you and your notes. <laughs> Um, no, I, I'm not, 
I don't know, just remain humble is the main thing. I think I think it's important not to take yourself too seriously. Um, yeah. And I, I try to do that. I mean, I'm wearing a shirt that says Oofty Doofty and, 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 a, and a St Kilda yeah, beanie to an Instagram live <laughs> about my, my professional company. So it's like, I, th- I think it's important not to take yourself too seriously and just be real and be true to yourself. Um, and I think, I think I was back there. I, I, I mean, maybe pre-2015, I wasn't as much. But I think by 2015, I'd probably grown into that. And I'd probably just tell myself to keep being humble, um, keep working hard, uh, keep being resilient. They're the main things. Be resilient and be humble. They're the two things keep, you need in this industry. Keep it real. Yeah, keep it real. Well, if, you, <laughs> if you're resilient and you're humble, you're going to go a long way, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And if I gave you a magic wand and I said, Josh, you can produce anything you want. Here's the cash. Oh. <laughs> what, what musical would that be? If I could produce anything I want. Yes. Oh, in the Heights again. In the Heights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, if I could produce anything I want. Um, yeah. uh, I, I really, I really, yeah. It would probably be in the heights. If I could do it in the heights again, I would really love to. Um, it's just trying to. <laughs> I love. I love to see you in the heights. You should play the main role. No way. No, you would be amazing. No, I'm far Why? too white, baby. No, I'm the boyfriend. And the boyfriend. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's what. That's one thing we did. We did really well up in. We did really well up in Sydney. We tried to make sure that uh, we but, uh, but huh? should, there is a cast member who was like you know um, the, the one of the Benny. main cast members yeah yeah, yeah Benny, Benny. Yeah. yeah but I mean traditionally that role is uh, an African American role so we oh, okay. really we really worked hard at getting that um, that specific uh ethnicity into the show because it's really important to the show to have that ethnicity in it so yeah when we got to Mimatic it was really cool and then we had Joe Kalau, Kalau in it as well which was also really cool in the second season um, yeah we worked really hard at getting these sort of authentic Latin uh, Latinx performers um, yeah it was it was it was a really cool experience a difficult one to cast that show where you're really searching ah. high and low to try and find these specific latinx and uh, um hispanic performers that can perform this stuff because this material is quite hard and music theater is a very specific genre that um yeah that latino community don't necessarily get involved in too much they're quite oh, heavily amazing. involved in the music industry um but the theater industry is quite it's quite hard to find them in Australia, but we were like, we need to, we're going to find them. We have to find them. Um, yeah. And you did. And, and, that's, and, and we did. And, and we did. Yeah. And we were really proud of that. Yeah. And so like, yeah, you guys and stage, I did that perfectly. Like, yeah. Amazing. Amazingly. Like, but I just want to see you in a show. Cause I, I know you do. Since 2014 and I still haven't seen you in a show at chapel. So. <laughs> so I'm yeah, going to boost my own show and put you in it. Josh Robson live in chapel. Yeah. So if I get, if I was producing a show and I can say, I'll give you any role you want to do. Yeah. What role would you want to be? Uh, I've always, I've always said my, my favorite, my, my, um, dream role is on Jurassic in Les Mis. And I was lucky enough to understudy that. So I sort of ticked off my that box to a degree. I've ticked off that, that box. It's such a, it's such a, uh, powerful role and a really um a really strong yeah. and a leader and that sort of thing and that sort of qualities in him that I see in myself sometimes so I, I really love that love that show and love that music and love that character um one down the track would probably be Javert in the same show so like when I'm a bit older so, or something like that and the show comes back maybe uh maybe I would love to perform Javert in the same show amazing and mm. yeah well, what was the most embarrassing moment on stage that you had? Oh well, it's, it's also <laughs> in the same. It's also in Les Mis. So there's oh, this, really? Uh, there's it. Yeah, and it's a story that I often tell as my most embarrassing. Um, there's this. There's this scene uh, in it which is called "Lovely Ladies." It's just before um, 
the sailors sort of head to the street just before Fontaine's, Fontaine's hair gets cut and all that stuff. Um, and these three sailors come on and start the whole scene by singing, lovely ladies waiting through the smoke, seven months at sea can make you hungry for a poke. So, um, lovely ladies. Yeah, so that that's that's what my line was. I, I have to go back into my hair. I was like, what it was? And, are you uh, are you gonna sing it for us? That's what that was my singing for you. Um, Thank you. No, you said, no. So th- so that that's that's the line I had to come on and sing. And one yeah. day I had a complete mental blank. Uh, so that's what the line was. And I was like, lovely ladies, smelling through the smoke. Think I'll drop my anchor around. I love the smell of smoke, which doesn't even rhyme. It doesn't even make sense. It's different <laughs> lyrics. It's just sort of fumbled out of my mouth. And I was like, that sounds so weird. And after you do 150 to 200 shows, anytime someone stuffs up that little tiny bit, it's so easy to notice. So you know when you hear something over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And then something changes about that one thing. You're like, what? What was that? That sounded weird. That's not usually what you do. <laughs> Um, it's like if you work at a cafe or something and someone orders the same yeah. thing every day and then they come in and order something different. You're like, what? Why are you doing that? Um, that sort of vibe is what happened in that moment. And everyone's sort of, we call it corpsing when you laugh on stage. Uh, and everyone started <laughs> corpsing. Um, but then down the track, uh, I had this thing in my head where I was like, I have, to, I have to remember this. I have to remember this line. So every time I went yeah. on, I'd, I'd try and remind myself of the line in my head. And then one time I went, lovely lady, smell them through the smoke and then didn't sing anything for the next two lines. I completely blanked and didn't <laughs> sing a single word. But the action that I was required to do as part of my blocking was to hump the other sailor's leg next to me. So usually the line is um, <laughs> seven months at sea can make you hungry for a poke and I'd hump the guy's leg. Uh, but in this uh, time... I didn't sing that line at all. I didn't even sing anything. And I was just standing there <laughs> humping the guy's leg. So my muscle memory was continuing to do the action. Uh, but I wasn't singing any lines. So I was just humping a dude's leg on stage for, for 10 seconds. And then that's, everyone laughed yeah, again. That's amazing. We've that's got two minutes left for you. Two minutes? Because Instagram kicks us off, which, is, which oh, sucks. boo. <laughs> But thank you so much for joining us. And you're getting married in October. I am. And you're going to send me a Zoom link for the wedding? Or oh, am I one of the five invited? <laughs> five invited to my wedding oh. via, via this Chapel of Chapel. I think Chapel yeah. of Chapel is live streaming my wedding. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Let's have a Zoom link. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> Chapel of Chapel live stream the wedding. What a vibe. Uh, 2020, oh. hey? 2020, <laughs> whatever. I wish you all the best for Monday. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure chatting. I hope I haven't dragged on too much. Everyone who's stuck around. No, it's been so much fun. I love it. Yeah, it's been good. And I'm going to be watching on Monday night on your Facebook channel. You're the best. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Thanks, mate. Uh, Thank you, Josh Robson. You're amazing. Bye. You're a superstar. Thank you.